Hello, this is Chris Duncan at Find Your Focus Photographic Education, and I'm also a master on the Arcanum. And today we're working with this image. I'm going to show you how to change the color of something and still maintain lots of detail and depth in that. So we have this image right here of my model. I'm going to zoom in just so you can see she's wearing this beautiful gold dress. have all that nice detailing in here. But really, this dress is not gold. It is white. And uh, when I was looking at the image, I just felt like the gold wasn't, or the white, was too overpowering. Um, beautiful model, nice setting. I like the lighting we have on this, but I just felt the dress wasn't quite right, so I wanted to make it gold. So kind of what we did here, and I'm going to go through these layers real fast and then show you the process we used, is um, I converted everything to black and white, which let me disable that layer mask so you can see. Created everything black and white. Okay, this is about a 50% fill. I duplicated that layer in multiply mode. I'm going to enable that mask. What this mask did um, is it let me paint in just the dress black and white. And then I used a color layer to paint the dress, dress in there. So those are kind of our layer approaches and what we did. And let's start from scratch and work through this process. So the first thing you always want to do is duplicate your background layer. Command J or Control J if you're on a PC will do that. That way I always can go back to my original. Now, um, I like to convert my images to black and white before I start changing the color. That one, for one, it gives me a complete neutral background. So my color brushes that I end up using on it, have no, they won't be affected by an underlying color. Everything will be grayscale. That way if like down here, if we zoom in, let that catch up to us. If we zoom in, we can see how I've got this red, this amber gel coming through and down here, and some different tones of white through her dress. If I tried to paint this with a different color, then those two colors on top of each other would blend and make a color that might not have been acceptable. So I want to make it all black and white. Um, before I use Silver Effects Pro for the sake of this thing, I am just going to go to a hue saturation layer and I'm going to pull down my saturation. Okay, I am going to invert this mask by hitting Command I. So now my mask is black you can see in my layers window over here. Okay, now what I want to do is I just want to get a white brush. It's going to reveal. I'm going to put my opacity at a hundred percent and my flow a little less that way I can paint on top and get a soft edge brush I'm going to zoom in here, and I am just going to paint in, brush is a little too big, I'm going to paint in, being really careful with my edges, I'm going to paint this dress gray, okay, I want to be really careful with those edges, so when I get to the ends I need to make a smaller brush, I don't want to get into her skin or the background or her hair, if we do a little bit we can come back and tweak that since we are in an adjustment layer, and a layer mask, but that's kind of the objective here, right? And if her hair gets a little bit, it's probably okay since the color tones will be similar. Um, so I'm just painting this in right there. Make sure I hit all of it. All I'm trying to do is make it grayscale. So like I said, so all the color tones will be correct when I paint through. So let's scroll down here. I'm going to use my smaller brush and hit these edges. Like I said, you want to be careful. I don't want to. I don't want to be really sloppy, but I'm not worried about being 100% bullseye accurate on this because there's some blending techniques we can do that will correct it if we go over a little bit. But see, now I still have highlight back there, but I just don't have that color tone. So let's make this brush a little smaller and rotate it, so I can hit this little ribbon right here. And I'm using a Wacom tablet. Um, which allows me precise control instead of using a mouse. This is very difficult to use with the mouse. I know some people can paint with the mouse. That is not me. I need to paint with my Wacom tablet. Um, I write my name with a pen, not with a rock. So to me, it just makes sense to use a tablet. So here we are just making our dress gray real fast. Let me just finish this off. Make sure I hit all the, br all the dress. Okay, just on my hue saturation layer. Um, like I said, in the other image, I actually did a black and white conversion through Silver Effects Pro. It's a Google plugin. Um, 
We're recording this on, what is it, March 28th, 2016, over the weekend. In fact, March 25th on Friday, they announced that the Nick or the Google collection, Google Effects, which used to be Nick filters, um, is completely free now. Um, so you get all six programs, um, Viveza, Define, Color Effects 4, Silver Effects 2, HDR Effects, um, Silver, I said Silver Effects, and Sharpener, all for free, which is a great, it's a pretty good price. You really can't beat that price. So like I said, we're making it grayscale here. I'm almost done. Okay, and this is very important. This is a very important step. Um, for the sake of this video, I'm being a little sloppier on the edges, but um, that's something that we can come back and worry about later too when we start fine tuning this. So I wanted to make this a gold dress. Um, but by having the grayscale layer, I have no color influence from what's under it when I begin to paint. Okay? So I think I've got this pretty good. Let's see the full image. Hit Command Zero and it gives us full image. See there, I just made her dress grayscale. Okay? I'm going to duplicate this layer. The first hue saturation layer, black and white layer, I'm going to bring to about eh, somewhere between 50 and 60 percent. Okay, and this top one I'm going to put on multiply, just to give me more depth through it. Okay, and then maybe bring that to about 85 percent or 70 percent somewhere there. And those will be adjusted later. Okay, but that gives me a lot more depth and highlight and shadow, and also lets me know areas I may have missed with my brushing. So I'm going to hit this top part I missed right around there, and maybe a few of these edges. Okay. So, now that we have this grayscale brush, we can start changing the color. Now, there's in Photoshop, there's lots of different ways. There's replace color, there's selective color. We could have done a selection just of the white. Regardless of how you get there, you need to make sure you start on a grayscale when you're using this technique. Okay. I want to, I'm going to hold down my command key and click inside this layer mask, and it's going to make that selection. Okay. Oh, and I can see a selection I missed there, so let me, let me brush in those areas again because I want this selection to be your whole dress. Now let's try it again. Oh, one more right down here. So let's get that one area. Okay. Now command click. See how her whole dress is selected. Now I'm going to go up to select, modify selection and hit feather. And I'm going to feather this. Depending on the size of your image and what portion you are colorizing, this will change. For this image, um, being about 4,000 pixels, I'm going to do a five pixel radius. It's just going to feather the edge of that selection a little bit. Okay, and it's important I want to leave this selection. Remember this selection. You can save it or you can always come back and get to it. But what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to paint within that selection. And actually, I want to modify it again after I zoom in. I'm going to go to Select, Modify, and I'm going to Expand. And I'm going to expand this by about five pixels. And there it goes, and it's covering everything outside. Okay. Actually, that was too much. Let's expand by about three. So we'll go modify, expand, and we'll do three pixels. And there it kind of puts it right on the edge of the dress. Okay. I can now modify this selection if I want to using the quick selection tool or my other selection tools, a lasso, and add to it or minus to it. Um, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to do that, but that is some stuff we can do. This is going to give us a rough start. Okay. I want to add a new layer, hit this icon here, and set this blend mode to color. What the color does, let me keep it at normal first. And let's just get a brush, hit B for brush, and my brush is this gold color right here. Okay? And I start painting on there. Well, it's just kind of bleh. It's just a it's just a color. There's no texture, there's no shape, there's no form to it. By using the color blend mode, now I get that same color, but it reveals all the shape and texture underneath it. So doing the color blend mode is very important to this, okay? So we're going to keep that color blend mode. Let's start over here. Blend mode to color, no brush strokes. Now I want to select my mask. What this allows me to do is when I get my brush, and what I like to do in my brush is set my opacity at 100 and my flow down about 20-30%. That allows me to paint over things without it looking Without it building up, it'll flow evenly, so it won't build up on top of each other. It'll build up naturally, just like you would with a paintbrush. 
Okay, and what this allows me to do is it creates a quick mask. So I cannot paint outside of those lines. I'm only going to be able to paint inside these lines. So I can go really fast and add this color everywhere I want. And I can worry about being sloppy. You know, I had to be precise with my other one because I didn't have this mask already. And you can see a little part I missed there, which we'll come back and hit. So I can kind of be really sloppy with it. Let me zoom out. Command zero will show me the whole thing. And see now I can, look how I can I can just throw this brush around and it's gonna only paint inside that mask area. And so this is how I like to color over my things. I'm gonna unselect now so I can hit a little of those areas I missed. I'm gonna come up a little, and this is where I'll start to be fine-tuning. I'll get different brush sizes. And I will fine-tune with this. Okay. And by doing the flow instead of your opacity, I'm always gonna to go to 100 percent opacity with this, but it's gonna build naturally by adjusting my flow. As in, as in, if I had my flow at 100%, every time I went over a new thing, it would start looking really gloppy, um, like I did that. So really, you can take your time with your color brush. You can take your time with your black and white layer mask when you do this. Okay. So we can see now that I've got this nice color. I'm going to get some of these edges. And now it starts to look believable with this image, and that gold dress makes this image so more powerful, in my opinion, with this image. Color Harmony works good. Um, it's all nice and believable. I get that detail on the dress. I get that contrast uh, from the highlight and shadows. But remember, the key is starting with that grayscale image. So we can zoom out a little bit, and you can see. And it's really that simple. You will want to fine tune and come in here and um, make sure those edges are all nice and clean. Um, you can also put a layer mask on this new layer if you want to come back now with a black brush and, and you need to feather some of those edges off. Okay, I can still come to this color. I can pick another color. Let's keep a little. Let's pick a little deeper bronze color. Now I want to select this mask right there that I just painted in. And I can come in and start adding, building some colors on top to add some more depth to this. So this is a technique I've really found helpful to change the color of almost anything. You know, if you start with a neutral gray, it'll work. And since her dress was white, I still get that nice light tone. I don't get a muddy color. I think I get a nice, crisp, clean, warm color to her dress. that I think works better um, with this image than her white one did. So, like I said, this was a quick, just for this tutorial's uh, sake, did that really quick. But you can see, we started with the white, we duplicated that layer, made it grayscale, then made it grayscale and multiply blend mode, and then added our color layer above it. And you can play at the opacities of this color. You know, if you want to turn that color off and say, I wonder what she looks like in a red dress. Add a new layer, change that to color blend mode select a red. Let's select kind of this deep red. I want to load my selection so I don't color out of it and I can paint her dress red. I don't think red was the best, was a good choice for this. We can do command Z, go to my color. How about a deep blue? So you get the idea, right? And even if you even if you want to, let's let's get rid of that. That was not pretty. Let's turn that color on. I can duplicate my color layer and then try maybe a soft light or different blend modes to get some different effects at lower opacities. Okay, but you gotta be careful with whatever these blend modes are that you maintain the clarity and the detail underneath it. You don't want to put it like on a normal blend mode or then it starts looking really muddy. See how that, that's a normal brush, <laughs> but normal blend mode. And there it is at color blend mode. That's the key to this. Or some of the soft light blend modes will work too. But you, those are usually work better at lower opacities. This technique works great if you want to change the color of someone's eyes 
or if you want to change the color of their hair, of course their clothing, or any element in the background. Um, it is harder to do with the black, to change the black to this, uh, change the color because it starts so dark. Um, that's a little trickier, but anything other than black you're able to change. Make sure you make it grayscale first, and then set your blend mode to color, um, and then you can just paint with the color brush and get the look that you desire. So once again, this is Chris Duncan at Find Your Focus Photographic Education, showing you here how to change the color of objects in your photographs. I uh, hope this helps you in your next image creation, and thanks again for watching, and happy creating.